Hey everybody, Alex here. It's that time again. I have a .NET project that I need to do, and it's been a minute. Now I used to do .NET on my PC, which I have over there, but now my main machine, and for the last many years, is a Mac. So being that it's 2022, and there's lots of options available on how to .NET in 22, I wanna see what options are available to me and how they compare on my Mac. By the way, I wanna use C Sharp to create a web application. So this is not some magic hocus pocus that I'm gonna be doing for uh, Windows development nothing like that this is just a cross-platform web app so if we take a look at the modern download site we have uh, .NET is free cross-platform open source developer platform blah, 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 blah. that's a tongue twister this is what I want to use .NET 6 because .NET 6 now has arm support so it's gonna run really fast and if you haven't seen my video comparing the different speeds of .NET 6 versus 5. I'll link to some of those down below. I've done it a couple of times already. So I'm here on my MacBook Pro M1 Max machine, which is a pretty new machine. So I have absolutely no concerns about speed here. Now there's a couple options. There's Visual Studio, which is everybody's favorite tool to do .NET, admittedly including my own favorite tool. There's Visual Studio 2022 for Mac, which is in preview right now, but it's coming out soon I guess I've tried it out it's kind of an underdeveloped tool but I'm gonna spin it up here as well and see what we can do with it and this is what I'm really curious about is dotnet CLI can I do an entire project using VS code and the dotnet CLI in this video I just want to kick things off do a hello world and see what the experience is like and then maybe in later videos if you're interested we can dive deeper into each one of these technologies now as a side note I am curious to see what you're all using and what you'd be interested in learning how to use so let me know in the comments down below what you currently use for dotnet development i have a feeling most of you are going to be using visual studio just have this feeling and are you interested in learning dotnet cli or uh, visual studio for mac let me know down in the comments below so if you want to get started you just install this right here there it is the mac os installer you can download it i've already done that this will get you the sdk this is if you want to start out with a cli approach now if you don't want to use the cli approach if you want to use visual studio for mac you don't have to download the sdk separately you can just go to the visual studio for mac site download visual studio for mac and that will also install the dotnet sdk for you so one step shop now what happens if you want to run visual studio the regular visual studio and you have a mac well you should probably get a windows machine then no seriously uh right now the support for visual studio on a mac is pretty bad the only way that you can do it and the way i'm doing it is if you run a virtualized environment so here i have a virtual machine using parallels now because i am on apple silicon this is an arm processor i have to use windows for arm and there's plenty of videos showing you how to install on Apple Silicon machine via parallels. Uh, by the way, if you are curious to check that out, I'll leave some links down below, including the link for a free trial of parallels. And there's a coupon code next to it as well. It expires, I think, January 31st. So here's Windows 11 running in parallels. And I did install Visual Studio 2022 on this. This is the brand new Visual Studio. It's the community edition, which is free. That's pretty cool, I like that. When I kick things off, it does work. It works, but you can see the wheels spinning and spinning and spinning. Uh, now I've created a couple of projects here as tests. Console applications will work just fine, of course. I wanna create a .NET Core project. So I'm gonna click on Create New Project, and you'll see that it takes a little bit of time to spin things up. Recent project templates, ASP.NET Core. There is the ASP.NET Core web app. Make sure you're on C Sharp if that's the link language you're trying to use click next I'm gonna call this my web app one click next here here it's gonna ask you what framework you want to use and I want .NET 6 by the way if you install Visual Studio Community Edition on Windows it'll also install the SDK for you so you don't need to do that separately authentication type I'm gonna leave that off for now and also this is important right here configure for HTTPS now Usually you'd want to do this, of course, because if you're creating a web app, a modern web app, and you're going to deploy that, you want to have HTTPS enabled. And when you click this button, normally it'll allow you to uh, preview the local builds as you're developing using HTTPS. So it's going to serve it up on a separate port than the regular HTTP version. But 
on Windows for ARM, for some reason that does not work and you get an error message. So if you're not using Windows for ARM, if you're using regular Windows, this will work just fine. Leave that on. But for now, until it's figured out, until I figure it out or somebody else figures it out, configure for HTTPS. I'm going to uncheck that. So one of the niceties about Visual Studio is that it provides a lot of functionality as buttons, as menu items. It's visual environment. It's an IDE that's visual. So it's very easy to get started. But do you know what's going on under the hood? That's always been kind of my issue since I've started working with Visual Studio back in 2000, a long time ago. Uh, <laughs> what does it do? You don't really learn what it does. You kind of just use it. And eventually, if you're curious, you'll dig into it, you'll learn. But if you're using the CLI approach, you're going to know right away what's going on. And we'll take a look at that. So it created the app. It's magic. And there it is. You can now go into your pages. By the way, this works, but you see how long it takes to do things here? It's just very laggy. Opening a file is very laggy. What's happening here? Why is it so slow? Visual Studio 22 just came out and it's actually a really nice fast product. But what's happening here is that this Visual Studio is not for ARM. Visual Studio 2022 is an x64 based piece of software. So right now, Windows 11 is actually translating from x64 to ARM instructions. So it can run that. And the translation layer in Windows is really, really slow. It's not like Rosetta, where Rosetta is translating an x64 package directly into ARM on a Mac. The Windows translator is really, really slow. And to top it all off, this is all running inside a virtual machine. So maybe a little bit of extra weight there. By the way, right now this is inside a window. You can also just run Visual Studio in Unity mode or no, it's called coherence mode now. Sorry, Unity is another product. Coherence mode basically allows you to just use Windows right inside your Mac. So here's Visual Studio. I'm dragging the window around right inside the Mac. Kind of feels like it's part of the Mac operating system, but it's a little bit slower. All right, you want to exit coherence, you just go to view, exit coherence, and we're back to this window here. So what I want to do is run this, see what it looks like. And I want to do the exact same thing in all the other methods for creating this application type. While that's starting up, we'll come back to that. Let's take a look at how to do this with Visual Studio for Mac. So I've installed Visual Studio for Mac 2022. It's in preview right now. You'll notice this icon is Visual Studio. That's the current Visual Studio for Mac. This one's the preview one. That's Visual Studio 2022. They have so many Visual Studios, it's confusing. But this is the newest one. And it's not fast either, by the way. Here it is. I'm going to click on new. It has less options. It kind of keeps things a little bit cleaner, less confusing. So here's .NET 6, no authentication. And since I didn't do HTTPS in my other one, I'm going to uncheck that here. Although if you want HTTPS here directly on a Mac, it actually works. I'm going to uncheck it though, because I want to be consistent my web app too. And I didn't do version control in the other one. So I'm going to skip it here. And let's create. All right. So now it's creating. And um, it's still taking a while to do that. Okay, now it opened up and the interface is just it feels like what's the point of having this interface? There's barely anything here, but they're working on it. And it's going to probably grow. Um, anyway, I have yet to find a good reason to use Visual Studio for Mac when you have Visual Studio code that does such a good job. We'll get to that in a moment. There are a few more steps that need to be done with the CLI approach in Visual Studio code. And that might turn some people off initially, but I feel like you're more in control of uh, your projects that way. But this allows you to do things like right click on the project and say clean, um, set a startup project, you'd have to manually modify all those files if you're using the CLI approach. And if you're using Visual Studio code where this will handle some of that for you. Also debugging is on by default, and it's all hooked up. Let's run this and see what's going on here. All right, so it's building build successful still takes a little bit of time to start up. And there it is. So this is what the web app looks like the default web app and everything works. Of course, if you navigate back and forth, let's go back to the Windows machine and check that out. And of course, this one is exactly exactly the same allows you to navigate back and forth and everything's working fine. Finally, there's one more approach that I want to show you. So I'm going to stop this debugging section here on the Mac. Let's go to the terminal. Now, if you've installed the CLI, then you're going to have .NET available on your command line. So if I do .NET dash dash version, you'll see that we have version six installed, which means that now I can create a brand new project. So .NET new my web app. I'm a little confused. So I'm going to actually use dot net new dash dash help. 
And you can see why Visual Studio environments are a little bit more user friendly than this. But I mean, if you learn these commands, that's not a problem. It's just learning it and then you'll remember. All right, I think it's easier to just Google it. So I Googled for .NET new and some examples here. Here. .NET new and then what type of application you want. These are the templates. Do you want a console app? Do you want a web app? I want a web app. So I'm going to use web app. And what's this? You can pass all kinds of different parameters. This being a Microsoft site, everything is always really, really drilled down a lot and complicated. All right, here's what we're going to do. .NET new web app. And let's hope this works. My web app three. So I'm just taking a stab in the dark here and seeing if this works. Invalid options. So I'm gonna do dash dash name. Let's see if that works. My intuition worked here. So that's pretty cool. Uh, it did create a My Web App folder. That's good. My Web App 3. And if we're in this folder, yeah, that's exactly what I wanted. Now, the difference here is that it did not create a solution for me. The way Visual Studio organizes uh, projects is typically creates a top level solution where you can host multiple projects. This one creates just the actual project itself, just the web app, not a solution. It probably has an option to actually generate the solution. But if we're taking a look at the code here, which I'm going to do right now, code dot and there we are, there's no solution file here. So it's going to be a little different. Now, if you want to run this, Visual Studio Code is my preferred tool. And you can actually install a couple of extensions into Visual Studio Code that will allow you to easily run and debug this. It'll actually just come up with notifications and recommendations so that uh, it'll install the proper ones to be able to look at C sharp and things like that. So here it is. This is the first one I installed. C sharp, it's from Microsoft, and it's got 14 million installs, you want to go ahead and activate this one reload required, I did that. And now I can use the C sharp extension here. Now we have the ability to look at C sharp files, and we're getting full IntelliSense here. So if I say, uh, using system dot, you can see everything is there all my IntelliSense and it's working pretty fast, which I really like. If you want to debug it, you go to the debug tab, look at this, this is not set up. So it offers you to customize run and debug by creating a launch.json file. Basically, that file will tell Visual Studio Code how to uh, debug your project and how to attach to breakpoints and so on. It creates this .vs code folder, it has launch.json and it created tasks.json. So basically, these are just things that hook into and run the build commands, you don't need to remember all this, but you have access to it. These are the things that Visual Studio will do behind the scenes for you. Here you'll see everything because it's text files, it's JSON files. So now you can just see exactly what's happening, what commands are running, you don't really need to know these, you can just close that up, go back to the debug tab. And now you have this little play button up here. So you can launch the web app, I'm going to click that this is going to build and launch for me the same way it does in Visual Studio, it even opens up the browser, here it is. And that looks exactly the same as before, except now it's web app three, you can put breakpoints here as well, and everything works. So that's pretty cool. Now, if you're wondering whether these projects are compatible with each other, the answer is yes, they are. So let's say I wanted to open up my web app solution project in Visual Studio code and switch over from using Visual Studio for Mac to using Visual Studio code approach, you can totally do that right click here. Let's show that in finder. Where is that users Alex projects my web app two. So let's go to Visual Studio code open folder users Alex projects my web app two. there it is pop that open. And now we're working with a solution that was created by Visual Studio in Visual Studio code. So you can go back and forth like that. If you're working with other folks that prefer one environment over another one, but now you have the solution here as well. So this is now the solution project. It has an extra folder here called VS, you won't be needing that here, but keep that around. And of course, if you need to debug this in Visual Studio code, you're still going to need to go here and create that launch configuration for .NET 5 plus and you're going to have this new VS code folder now with launch and tasks, you can commit that to your Git repository as well and keep that all together so that people can switch back and forth if they need to. Now, if I go back here and run this project from Visual Studio code underneath, this is just using the dot net 
CLI, the .NET runtime, so everything works exactly the same. And if I wanted to take that solution I created with Visual Studio on Windows and bring it over here, I can do that and vice versa. So I'm gonna get started with my project. Just wanted to show you real quick the options available. And uh, I think I'm gonna start with a CLI approach for my own project, just because I wanna get used to that and uh, try that out. And I wanna keep using the Mac. I don't wanna switch back to Windows right now. So hopefully this was helpful. If it was, I'd appreciate a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel for more content like this. Thanks for coming. I'll see you next time.